So um, a warm welcome from me also to Loughborough. Um, I'm absolutely delighted that Professor Sakai could join us, particularly this year, because it's this year not only do we host Team GB in the preparation camp for the Olympics, but during the Games, of course, Team Japan will be with us. So I look forward to, see, look forward to seeing some of your countrymen and women with us in the summer, and hopefully we'll have some sunshine for them at that time as well. <laughs> so thank you, Martin, for the introduction, um, and very pleased to speak to you this afternoon a very small snippet of some of the work that we're doing at Loughborough in the School of Civil and Building Engineering. Um, one of the pieces of work that I'm involved in the moment is around responsible sourcing, which is a phrase that have been, has been mentioned two or three times already today. And there are a number of people in the room who are much more expert in this than me. But what we are trying to do under a particular project is bring that expertise together to raise awareness and disseminate information. So I should be delighted to sit down with Philippe maybe afterwards, have a cup of tea and share some of the results that we've also got in this area. So my background was architecture, but I specialise in sustainable construction materials now, having, as Martin explained, worked with him in the concrete industry previously. So in the UK right now, we hold the only responsible sourcing funded projects um, around research and dissemination. So we've got a network called AppPray, which you're all welcome to join, and I'll um, just flag up a couple of publications later. And this is about dissemination and building a community around this relatively new subject, folks. But we've also had training um, funding to work with small businesses and local contractors. And we have a program this year working with architects, designers and contractors as well. So this is a program that we're very much committed to, very much in the program of work that Dennis was explaining to you earlier on about our sustainability research school and what we do across the whole of the campus. So in the UK then, responsible sourcing was very much brought to the fore in the strategy for sustainable construction delivered in 2008, within which the government and an industry forum debated and presented a target of 25% of products in the UK should be sourced from responsible sourcing schemes. Now the definition, I have to say, is not completely fixed down, it is still a matter of debate, but we do have a standards landscape in this area. So we have BES 6001 and BES 8902, which I will mention again shortly. But this is an emergent agenda. So last month, almost to the day, the UK Contractors Group issued a public policy statement in which it's basically committed all of its membership Remember, this is the vast majority of contractors within the UK, the big businesses that you will know and love, perhaps, Lendley, Skanska, these sorts of people, to support and give preference to procuring products which are able to demonstrate compliance with a recognised responsible sourcing scheme. So that policy commitment then gives licence to the major contractors to use responsible sourcing as a tender decision point. This could be critical, and I appreciate this is not happening all the way across the, the world, Philippe, but this could be a very critical turning point. What's it all about then? Well, um, there are some people in this room who have seen these images before. Um, they are pictures taken um, in India at a sandstone quarry. Now, the real shocking things about these is when you actually say to people, well, this is, this is stone, it's being cut by children, in clearly not terribly safe environment, um, but it's destined from, for the UK home improvement market. So when you go to your DIY store and you think, I'm going to have this lovely patio, like this one up here, and you can tell it's a British patio because there's nobody on it. <laughs> um, when you buy your stone, do you know where it came from? Can you be sure that no child labour was, inv was involved? Now, I suspect for a great number of you, you know, you go to Sainsbury's, you buy your fair trade bananas, etc. You don't really think twice about it. But for building products, this is a relatively new agenda. And it's hitting the news. Here is an example that hit the news a few months back. This is the wrap. The plastic, well, I don't know what it's made of, plastic stuff 
Dow Chemicals are providing to go around the Olympic Stadium. I have no idea. My background is architecture, I'm allowed to say this. I have no idea why they want to do this to such a fantastic structure. I mean, for me, McAlpine's and the, everybody else that's worked on it has done a fantastic job. And here we have civil society and MPs in absolute uproar because Dow Chemical are responsible now for the whole legacy of the pollution and the catastrophe that was Union Carbide at Bhopal. So there are a lot of people, as you can see here, saying, please don't insult the games by using this company as a supplier. Now, this then is about reputation. This is no, it's no good just to say this is a low carbon product. It's not good enough. There's a reputational factor here. And so people are questioning Dow's legitimacy to be on Olympic Park. And responsible sourcing then is very much this breadth of sustainability issues Bringing, talking not just about carbon, talking not just about waste and water, but fundamentally talking about the social and the reputational and the ethical factors around material choice. So in 8902, the British Standard, sets out the landscape, the range of subject areas that would be expected to be seen in a responsible sourcing scheme. And you can see they span the three pillars of sustainability. So if we translate that into a product standard, for example, under BES 6001 developed by BRE, what we see then is a range of some of the indicators that we would expect to see, but others which are a little bit new, aspects of supply chain management, ethics, legal compliance. So this is important in how people are making decisions also. And I do apologise, Andy, my figure is not up to date here. Every time I do this presentation, that number's gone up. Thank you. So, 88% of the UK's concrete is now certified under 6001, which is a fantastic figure. And so the industry can genuinely show leadership. When I explain responsible sourcing to people, I say, well, let's pretend you are a fantastically responsible client. You want to build your whole house, your whole office out of responsibly sourced materials. Sorry, you can't, because the glass industry are not playing ball. So you can have a building, but you can't have windows. You can have concrete blocks, you can have asphalt, you could have aggregates, you could have some timber, you could have some steel, you could have all sorts of things. But aluminium, glass, <coughs> there are various sectors who are behind the times on this. If you're interested to know which manufacturers have got such products actually online and offered, the BRE site greenbooklive.com will direct you to a list of the manufacturers and the products which are certified, of which there are more than 50 companies offering hundreds and hundreds of products. So at greenbooklive.com. Now, I wanted to just give you a very brief sense of some of the things we've been doing around this. As I said, the AppPray network um, and there are some postcards for you to pick up down when we go back for refreshments. Um, we have a very limited budget, but we have a lot of enthusiasm and we have a lot of people interested in our work. So one of the things we are doing is trying to do small pieces of work which actually really make a contribution. So, for example, I've been doing some work around legitimacy and trying to unpack and unpick what legitimacy means for construction products. And I just wanted to share with you one of the products of one of our undergraduate students. And this is a draft. It's not been published yet and it's not been validated yet. So you've got an exclusive preview today of what we want to produce for architects and specifiers, which is an overlay to the green guide. So if you're not familiar, the RIBA have done a plan of work. The Green Guide to the Plan of Work sets out lots of sustainable construction advice. But material selection is underrepresented in it. And it's at this point that I wanted to reflect on something that Philippe said, because from our research, that dotted line is really important. And you're very much right when you say, you know, decisions are made at scheme design. But what we found is if they aren't making decisions on responsible sourcing at that point, your chance is almost <coughs> lost. So getting in early is really important, but it's actually not too early. So I think it's realistic. So we hope to publish this 
in due course. So I just wanted to give you a flavour of that. We've got ongoing work um, around this subject. We'll be seeking more research funding as we move forward. We will be doing more events, and I'll flash one of those up in just a second. We've got 95 organisations already part of the network. It is free to join and be part of it and keep in touch. But at this point, those of you who know me know I like a little bit of ritual humiliation. Sorry. <laughs> um, and it wouldn't be fair for me to stand up here today um, without thanking some of the people that make our work at Loughborough possible. So at that point, I would like anybody who is a researcher, an NGD or a PhD student at Loughborough currently to stand up. You know who you are. And it's at that point I would like to give them particular thanks. Because some, I've got, we've got NGDs in the room, we've got PhDs and visiting scholars as well. Without their hard work, there's a lot of things that we wouldn't be able to do. So because they are here today, I wanted to thank them for that. Um, moving on. We are in a position then to be able to support people should they wish to have extra support or advice on responsible sourcing. There's a training website which is being run by Responsible Solutions, which is fairly easy to remember, responsiblesourcing.co.uk. The APRE network is listed at the top. And I wanted to flag up to you that we have an, a conference on responsible sourcing here in November. Um, on the APRE website, there are presentations from our event last year, which was highly successful. And this year, we've got people like BRE, British Land, and a whole raft of people, Skanska, all sorts of people coming in to talk about case studies of what's really happening in terms of projects um, and how responsible sourcing is being implemented in the industry. So you, you can see how it's put into practice and the challenges that can be overcome. So at that point, I shall stop and I'm very happy to talk to you, any of you, later on over tea. Thank you. Thank you.